On the 13th day of October, Halloween gave to me 13 Carfax Abbeys, 12 fathers stripping, 11 au pairs drowning, 10 children creeping, 9 rotty seizing, 8 snowy mazes, 7 bacons digging, 6 doorways bending, 5 children yowling, 4 zombie bulls, 3 haunted mirrors, 2 monster houses, and a fog that makes it hard to see. Hey everybody, and welcome back to our 31 Days of Halloween here at Legion Podcasts. It is Tuesday, uh, October 13th, and we are back into movies I just wanted to watch territory. Uh, Thanks as always for joining me. Enough uh, goofing off, enough (laughs) foo-for-ra, let's get into it. I'm talking about 1979's Dracula. Uh, It is one of the lesser mentioned, I feel interpretations of this story right along with uh that dan curtis jack palance uh dracula but the thing about the 79 dracula it's directed by john badham who would go on to do um a lot of really popular movies he did war games and short circuit and those stakeout movies and things like that in the uh the 80s did a lot of television uh here recently notably popped up on the show psych which tends to be a haven for Actors and directors from the 80s who wanted to work on a show for uh, for a while. But uh, yeah, so it was directed by him. Uh, it stars Frank Langella in the title role of Dracula. And uh, he's amazing. More on that in a minute. Lawrence Olivier is Van Helsing, which is crazy to me that there is a version of Dracula in which Lawrence Olivier plays Van Helsing. But he sure does, uh, and and does a German accent in the whole bit. It's uh, Donald Pleasance as Doctor Seward, and you know, and uh, Kate Nelligan plays Lucy Seward, who is really the uh, main female lead of the film. Um, and they do some mixing and matching. Like that's one of the things that's a little bit jarring about this version of Dracula is that Mina is Mina Van Helsing, and in, uh, instead of Lucy being Lucy Westenra and uh, sort of being the the first victim. Uh, Lucy Seward is sort of the Mina character. And so there there is part of me that's, you know, this is a less traditional take on the material, but also, you know, it's a, it's a sub two hour version of the novel. And so how do you do that? And I don't necessarily think that all of the choices are great. Um, not just the, the name changes, but there are some, uh, obviously some adaptations from, from the book that, that differ and from other film versions. Um, but this is incredibly Gothic. In fact, it's maybe my favorite representation of Dracula's castle or Carfax Abbey in this scenario, but you know, there's a big bat statue in the middle of the stairwell and stuff. It looks fucking great. There are cobwebs everywhere and candles flickering. It's like the mood of this movie is, oh, it is so good. You can just sink your teeth into it. Just live there. Wrap wrap yourself up in it. Um, Oh, it's so good. Uh, So the atmosphere is is fantastic. It opens with uh, the story of the Demeter, um, where you see sort of what happened, why the captain lashed himself to the wheel and so forth. Um... All that is really cool. There's a good first look at Frank Langella in this movie. He has got some real 70s hair. uh, So that it's like, imagine if the hair of John Travolta from that era found its way to Frank Langella's head. And sometimes it looks great. And sometimes it looks like he's wearing a helmet made of hair. Uh, But hey, Frank Langella has never... N- never before this movie, never after this movie. This is as fucking sexy as Frank Langella ever was. Uh, he is incredibly magnetic in this movie. Uh, it's it's great. It's a it's it's a great Dracula performance, and that's tough, right? Like, how do you get that sense of power and arrogance? They really capture that in this film. Like, Dracula comes across as like you're not gonna. There's no way you can beat me. 
You know, you guys are a bunch of knucklehead humans. I'm going to get away from you and then take a nap for a hundred years. And then when I wake up, you're dead. So anyway, it's, he's fantastic in the movie there. You know, this is another case of the effects being a little bit dodgy, uh, but it's 1979, you know, they do all right. For the most part, uh, the effects are quite good. There's some great model work when you see the Demeter crash and that kind of thing. I'm a sucker for that stuff, so I really like it. But there's also some bat puppet effects that are like, eh, okay, I get it. <laughs> you know, look, we're not, the the thing was not a, a, a around yet. There had not been a an American werewolf in London to set a standard uh, that, you know, perhaps Dracula by John Badham uh, did not quite reach. Um but, uh, you know, I, the effects for the most part are pretty good. And there's not really a ton of it. it. Like, most of this is played for the more, like, gothic romance angle of it a bit. In a weird way, like, the, <laughs> on paper, the Coppola version of Dracula is the better version of this interpretation of the story. But I really like this one because of Langella. I think he's amazing in it. I really like, there's a moment at the end of this, I'm gonna, slight spoilers for this version of Dracula. You know, it, it's like me spoiling, hey, here's how one of the hammer Dracula's ends. Um, but there's a moment where uh, Dracula is being roasted in the sun. And as he flutters away, like his cape flutters away is kind of the last image you you have of both Dracula and the film. But before it, it fades out, you cut to Lucy, who is, again, the Mina character, who, like, Jonathan Harker has been trying to save, and uh, Van Helsing is trying to save, and so forth. And when she sees the cape flutter away, which implies, of course, that Dracula will survive, uh, she smiles. And that's kind of the, the part of Dracula that I really like, is this idea that you know, he yes, he's a monster. No question about it. He feeds on the living. He preys on the weak. It, it, he's a horrible monster. And yet, and yet, he is also this sort of sullen figure. You know, a guy who, as he says in the Batam Dracula, like he sees friends die all the time and, um, and has had a number of brides over the course of his uh, hundreds of years alive. But, you know, nothing stays. Nothing remains. It's just him. And... You know, and that's partly why his ego is what it is in the film, I think. And anyway, it's a, a really good interpretation of the character that's a, much less a monster, even though he turns into wolves and bats and, and shit like that. There's not a lot of him just bearing things and tearing throats out and stuff like that, although that does happen at least once in the film. Um, but it's not, it's not terribly gory, although the opening is a little gorier than I recalled, but then it, it kind of settles down. It, it sort of blows its load, uh, on, on, in terms of the special effects, uh, in the early goings, but you know, it, it, it moves at a nice clip. Like I said, it's under two hours to get the whole story. in. uh, there are some very notable omissions. Like there are no brides of Dracula in this or anything. It totally skips over Jonathan Harker going to, Transylvania and becoming a prisoner of the count and that kind of thing. It, it kind of begins with the count showing up in England and then one thing leads to another, bada boom, bada bing. We got to kill Mina cause she's a vampire now that, but that that's creepy stuff. Like the one vampire that is not Dracula that you kind of get in this movie is really creepy and, and it's really well done. Um, so yeah, it, you know, if you've never seen it, uh, I streamed it on, Amazon, and I wanted to say this about it too. Uh, it looks great in the sense that the HD quality is very good, but the colors look really washed out to the point that some of those scenes almost look black and white. And I just don't remember if that's a characteristic of the film itself. That's how it's shot and how it's intended to, you know, drain the color as, as life drains and whatnot. Or, or, uh, if it's just kind of a bad print. Uh, which may be the case as well, um, which is a shame because there are some like vibrant, you know, it does that kind of 70s, uh, early 80s shit of like, we're going to do an interpretation on film of what it's like to be seduced by Dracula and it's swirling red colors like the fucking 
black hole for a second. Uh, so anyway, it, that stuff is fun and it looks like it would be great in high def, but it's kind of colorless. It came across as kind of orange. So, and I've got a pretty good TV and whatnot. Uh, I, I don't, I don't think it's a problem with the, the television. I think it may just be the color on the, uh, the print kind of a weird complaint to make about the film, but it did look good in high def and seeing Donald Pleasant's, uh, be comic relief in a Dracula movie is kind of fun. Um, so yeah, if you've never seen it, uh, check it out. I'm a big fan of it. Uh, but I also kind of grew up with it and I love Frank Langella and he is, uh, all kinds of sexy in this movie. Uh, not that Kate Nelligan isn't, but holy shit, you know, it is Frank Langella's movie and he, he steals it like right out from under, uh, Lawrence Olivier, who is great as Van Helsing, but, uh, uh, Van Helsing has one, one brief pause before we go here. There is a great Van Helsing line um, where when they first realize that Mina, no, not Mina, but Lucy has been bitten and that she's suffering from the bite of a Nosferatu, uh, he immediately is like, yeah, start rubbing garlic all over. And Jonathan Harker gives him some shit. He's like, I can't smell this anymore. Like the, the, the garlic oil is overpowering. Olivier is just like, I have no time for you. <laughs> you know, it just shuts him down. It's like, look, I'm trying to save her life. I don't have time to explain myself to you. Just shut up and do what I say. It's really good. Uh, Olivier is really good in it. Um, so at any rate, uh, if you get an opportunity to check it out, I think you'll enjoy it. And that's it. That's it for today. Uh, we will be back tomorrow with a new movie. No, I'm not going to tell you what it is. You got to you gotta come back. And of course, uh, as always, if you want to drop me a line, Ed Bo, that is B O at legionpodcasts.com let me know how your Halloween's going what you've been watching, what you've been doing uh, how you are enjoying the Halloween season I uh, I enjoy doing this all to hell so uh, I hope you're having a good time I certainly am and then uh, back tomorrow with another movie so have a, have a creepy Tuesday everybody and, uh, and I will talk to you on Wednesday Wednesday